clearly, although for some businesses, uh, energy and costs, for example, aren't a huge part of what they do, um, reducing your costs makes your business more profitable. Uh, and of course, you know, almost any business can start with improving its energy efficiency. Electricity, oil, uh, gas, all these things become more expensive. So you can do your calculations on current prices, but the chances of those um, prices actually holding um, are pretty small. I mean, recently we've factored on three or four large solar schemes where the return on net investment was around 16, 17%. And those are good examples of the sort of schemes that the government now is trying to change to get the return down to a more reasonable level, maybe seven, eight, nine percent in future. And I think that's approximately where things will stabilise, not just for solar, for all forms of technology going forward, maybe over the next two or three years. That's still an attractive return for most people at the moment. Well, it's a really exciting time with the, the latest uh, news from the government regarding the feed-in tariffs and the implementation of the renewable heat incentive. It means businesses have got a much clearer, uh, concise area to invest in renewable energy technologies. Uh, yes, Tridethic has nine holiday cottages with lots of additional facilities including indoor pool, play barns, soft play. I've always been interested in uh, renewables and the environment and everything else. Uh, and now it actually now finally makes financial sense to invest with government feed-in tariffs and renewable heat incentive. It's now a wise move commercially. Within the last two years, we've actually installed a wind turbine uh, that produces about 20% uh, 20 of our electricity, uh, solar PV that produces another 30%, and more recently, in the last few months, we've actually installed a district heating system, a biomass district heating system. So that's actually burning an energy crop, uh, in our case miscanthus, um, other people know it's elephant grass, which we will in fact be growing ourselves. So we are now completely self-sufficient in heating and hot water and 50% self-sufficient in electricity. So if your business it ha has a high demand for heat, whether it be a, a swimming pool, a leisure centre, a, um, a, a campsite or a, um, that, that has a very high heat demand, then something like a biomass boiler or heat pumps can, can provide you a very, very good alternative to, to uh, oil or, or even gas or even more so electric. Um, whereas if your uh, business is obviously more of a, 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 has a high demand for electricity, then a system such as a, the a feed-in tariff which will produce, uh, um, give you an income for using systems such as PV systems or, or wind systems will be a much better alternative. Different pieces of land suit different types of technology but most farms for example will have an ability to uh, at least theoretically put in solar and if they're particularly on the top of a hill um, wind will be uh, in their thinking as well. Um, so there's lots of exciting things that can be done but they're extremely site specific so it's very important that a full feasibility study is done beforehand that explores all the different opportunities there and looks at the, the, the cost benefits of all the different technologies that are available. With all the feed-in tariffs, the best policy that I would say is the sooner you actually install it, the better. The tariff rates will digress over time. That They were never meant to be there for infinitum. Um, they were there to basically accelerate the sector. The Green Deal uh, provides upfront finances of a, of a capital sum to allow businesses to invest in things like insulation in their building um, that is paid for by savings on their energy bill over time. Um, those savings mean that your energy bills stay flat to finance the upfront capital uh, that's invested in, in the energy efficiency measures. And of course, once that period is paid off, you then get real additional savings uh, for your business. The renewable heat incentive that is uh, uh, currently now active for, for the commercial sector um, is in some cases providing some exceptional returns. Um, again, it's very, very site specific, so there's lots of different types of wood fuel that can be used, from pellets to chips to, to actual your own supply logs. Um, and generally, the more automated the system, the, the sort of more expensive it becomes. You need to be, take a, a great deal of care in, yes, looking at publicly available information, but then making sure that before you invest too much time and money, you get the right level of advice, because it's an, easy, an area there where it's easy to, to make mistakes, and those mistakes can be costly. 
um, and indeed looking at the long-term future of how the income and perhaps costs of that technology might evolve. So while something might make economic sense now, will it make economic sense in five or ten years' time? Using a consultant was money well spent. I mean, in the past I've given consultancy to other people um, and now I find I'm, I'm buying in consultancy. And I think, obviously, you know, consultants vary, but very good consultants can, you know, save or make you substantial amounts of money. Well, the university as a whole has a very broad range of services that businesses could access. I mean, the centre itself is a group of scientists, engineers and uh, economists that really is interested in answering sort of slightly unusual questions that, that businesses may have. But more broadly, um, the un university has a vast wealth of knowledge. One thing that the centre can provide also, um, although we're a group of scientists and engineers, is that we also can address the economic impact of, of, of particular sustainable uh, energy uh, proposals. Um, so you know, it's not just a technical answer that we can provide, we can do something more than that too. So we'd always say take good advice. Most of the installers are, are very good at that. They, ha they are assured and uh, Real, which is an insurance scheme to actually provide that advice, impartial advice. Um, and they will give them the idea of the right technologies and tell them what they're expecting to return in their, um, from their technologies over a period of time. I think the best advice to give is to do research well beforehand because obviously there's a lot of new startup companies out there competing for business and they're a mixed bunch. Some of them are extremely good, some of them aren't so good and of course they want your business so they'll tell you things that need a little bit of checking out before you commit. We've acted for everyone in the chain if you like from the landowners um, through to the installers and then people who've got funding available. Um, it's reasonably well known that although the clearing banks are, are quite interested in lending into these projects, there's a lot of other sources of funding around who are more specialised and perhaps more used to weighing up the risks related to renewables projects. The, in the South West, the planning authorities have been quite forward thinking, so although planning is undoubtedly an issue that has to be addressed, in most instances the planning authorities are quite helpful and the the way in which um, one's able to get through the planning process is relatively clear. The wind turbine probably took a good 12-18 months before we actually had it installed from start to finish. This is obviously researching, going out to companies, having tenders, seeing which is the, the right turbine for us, etc. Planning for us actually um, was fine, we just sailed through. And in fact what's interesting is a lot of local people that look across at the turbine really like it. I'd like to look across and see which way the wind's blowing and <laughs> how, how much it's blowing. So we've had actually a good reaction. Um, the solar PV, fortunately for us, we actually didn't need planning permission because the solar PV also supplies the farm and the biomass district heating, then again, we didn't need planning because everything's you know, installed inside an existing building, all the pipework is hidden underground, uh, planners basically don't, don't need to get involved. If you don't own the property that, that you're working from, um, you, you basically have to have the landlord um, on your side to implement the systems. So the renewable technologies basically have very high capital upfront costs and very low running costs. And um, that's something that obviously if you're on a short term lease can be very difficult to, to implement. So um, quite often landlords will actually be quite happy to make the investment because it, because it can give them a very good return on investment. So quite often landlords will actually do it, implement it themselves and this could actually lead to you having reduced bills and, and the landlord still making a good return. We recently acted for an investor who teamed up with a, a farm, it's actually run as an educational trust. They had six large barn roofs which luckily all faced in, in roughly the right direction and they were able to install a just under 100 kilowatt solar installation on their roofs funded by our client in partnership so they're sharing the benefit. The, the farm essentially gets free electricity and um, our investor gets a, a good return on their, uh, on their money. Uh, I mean here locally in the southwest we've worked with Riverford Organics looking at their carbon footprint uh, and uh, dealing with tricky issues like whether plastic or paper bags are the most environmentally friendly uh, bags for Riverford to use. Uh, and we're also working with Axminster Carpets looking at reducing their energy consumption significantly in their manufacturing business. There is an example of an uh, agricultural nursery in Cornwall who were having rising fuel costs 
to heat their greenhouses, polytunnels and so on. Um, through uh, Regen Southwest Bio Heat program, we advised them and helped them with a, a capital grant for a biomass boiler to offset those costs and they made significant savings on their fuel bills. And the comments came back from that business that it basically saved their business. I mean, my, my view is that certainly even over the last couple of years, people have got a, a lot more understanding now about how renewables technologies perform. So they are prepared to take a lower rate of return than um, was perhaps the case last year and the year before because there's less risk that those technologies are not going to perform at the expected level. So yeah, at a, at a, with a project that's not got a great deal of risk, a return of 7, 8 or 9 percent still looks pretty attractive at the moment. So I certainly view it on three fronts. One, it gives us um, a certain amount of security in that we're producing a big chunk of our own energy. It's also very good commercially um, and it's very good environmentally. So it has three positives. And it's important to remember that a margin is a margin. And decreasing your cost base, for example, by reducing your energy consumption, is an equally valid, valid way of, of boosting your profits as increasing sales and sales margins. So by investing in renewable energies now, you can secure your energy prices, lower your dependence on, on external sources and, on, and uh, those oncoming price rises, and really give your, your business a better bottom line in the future. And also, I used to get quite frustrated and annoyed at how many windy days we had here. Um, fairly high up in Cornwall, and now I quite like windy days. So it's 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 a positive when it's when it's blowing hooly. I actually quite like it.